you. I'm trying to figure out how we can live in 2020 and have and, and all the busyness of the world and still have soul rest. It's becoming more and more difficult to do that. And so this week, I'm calling the message. I kind of turn these principles into action uh, statements because, again, if you're going to rest, you have to take action. I know that doesn't make sense, but you're going to have to take certain actions in order to get to soul rest. You're going to have to identify the enemy. You're going to have to dethrone your phone. And you're going to have to today, you're going to have to seize the day. You ever heard of that? That phrase, seize the day, carpe diem, right? That's uh, some old, uh, a really old dead uh, poet came up with that and, and popularized it, a guy named Horace. Uh, and, and the idea is what? You hear seize the day and you think, let's go get it. Let's go grab life by the horns. Let's go, you know, seize what's out there for you. Let's go hustle. Let's go make it happen. Let's go grind. And that doesn't sound very restful. Uh, but I'm not talking about seize the day that way. I mean it a little bit differently. I want you to seize the Sabbath. Anybody, ever, do you, just nod yes or no. Do you, has anybody ever heard the term the Sabbath? Yes, a lot of you have. Um, the idea uh, of Sabbath is something that if you grew up in church or you're around church, you, you probably get it, sort of. But uh, it wasn't until I was an adult, really, I started to really understand what that meant. And even when I understood it, I didn't always do it. And so today, because again, I'm not very good at this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to establish uh, what the Bible says, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Don to come up here and join me. That's why I've got this little interview set up here, like, uh, like it's the Ellen show or something. Uh, <laughs> well, a dance like Ellen. Um, but we're going we're gonna to get up here, and we're going to get y'all involved too. And so it's, this is going to be one of those four, huh? No, you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. No, you get salvation, and you get salvation, and you get salvation. That's all I got, all right? Um, but we're going to kind of have a discussion about what it looks like to Sabbath. And I'm going to draw on some of Don's experience. We've had some really good conversations lately about that. Uh, but first, let's establish what in the heck I'm talking about. And so you have a, a note sheet if you want to, to take notes at, at God, however the Spirit leads you to. Um, and I hope that if you've missed some of these sermons, you'll go back and watch it uh, so that you can get the whole idea of what it means to have soul rest. But uh, the Sabbath is a big part of that. <clears throat> so let's look at Hebrews chapter 4, and we're going to read, uh, it's, it's going to be extended here, about 11 verses in Hebrews. So it's in your Bibles, or if you don't have a Bible, it's up on the screen, but let's read what God's Word has to say. Now the Hebrew, do you know who Hebrews was written to? The Hebrews, I know, <laughs> you guys are so smart, um, right? It, it was written in the New Testament as a way for uh, God's people to understand what it, how Jesus changed things. They, were, they came up in the Old Testament under the law, under all these different types of covenants and promises. And then Jesus came and fulfilled a lot of those. And so a lot of Hebrews is just explaining what Jesus did. And, and they do that also by explaining the Sabbath in this new, uh, this new covenant that we're in. So Hebrews chapter 4, it says this. It says, God's promise of entering into his rest still stands. So we ought to, be, so we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. By the way, just put a pause there for a second. That's my concern for us. I, apparently, I'm not concerned enough because I'm not exactly trembling with fear about it. But we should be trembling with fear at the prospect that we would miss out on soul rest. I've seen it in some of your faces already. You don't think you need this. You're like, Ben, would you just get through this series so we can talk about something else more interesting? But I, I, what I'm concerned with, because I thought this for a long time, that I don't need this, that the way I'm living my life is just fine. And I, and there's, I don't want us to miss out on the rest that God has for, this, uh, has for us. So keep going. Verse 2, it says, For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. Talking about God's people. It says, But it did them no good. Because they didn't share the faith for those who, of those who listened to God. For only we, and if this is your Bible, underline this, this sentence here. Only we who believe can enter in his rest. As for others, God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter a place of rest. Even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in other passages, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. 
Again, pointing out, wait a minute, God said, have you ever run into a scripture like that? Well, God said here, but then he also said over here this, what gives? <clears throat> it says, so God has set another time. Oh, uh, no, sorry, verse 6. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. Verse 7 says, so God set up another time for entering in his rest. And that time is today. By the way, parentheses, that's Jesus. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. Verse 9 says, so there is a, a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered in God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. Mm. That is a very appealing passage to me. Because I'm like, man, there is something out there for us. There is a restfulness. I don't think, just listen to the conversations that you have with people. Small talk. Hey, you see him at the grocery store. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm busy as a one, one-legged man in a butt kicking contest. Man, I, I just got so much going on. I can't, I can't do, oh man, it's just, just been busy. Man, I'd love to catch up with you, but I'm just so busy. Everybody is busy. Everybody could use a little soul rest. And some of you think, myself included, that just because I wasn't physically breaking down, that, all, that, that that was okay, that I didn't need anything. But there is a rest that is for our souls that comes from something uh, different. And so let's look at the Sabbath, the origins of the Sabbath. This is something that the Hebrews 4 alluded to. What he was talking about there, uh, author of Hebrews, was Genesis chapter 2, way back in uh, the creation, right there at the end of the creation narrative. It says, on the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day, declared it holy, because it was the day when he, rest he rested from all of his work in creation. This hit me uh, the other day for the first time. I never thought about it like this. But it's not like God was like, "Woo! all right, I'm spent. Man, I just took nothing and turned it into everything. And now, man, do I need to kick up my feet? My back is killing me. That's not what, God didn't need to rest. Y'all understand that, right? That when he, when he rested on the seventh day, it was an intentional decision. It was, it was a way to model for us a rhythm of our life. He chose to, because what does he say at the end of every day when he created something? It's good. He said, daggum, man, I know what I'm doing. He said, man, this is good. This is, man, the people, animals, light and dark, this is good. And so on the seventh day, he sat back and he enjoyed that goodness, didn't he? He, he didn't need it, but he chose it. He desired it to sit back and, and enjoy the things that he created. But of course, we're human beings, and we like to really just mess stuff up. And so instead of just taking our cues from God, uh, when as Exodus rolled around, uh, God decided he needed to make this a law. He needed to make this a law for his people. So uh, in laying down this little thing called the Ten Commandments, I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard, uh, he said this in Exodus chapter 20. He says, remember, because they had forgotten apparently, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. He said, you'll work for six days, but on the seventh, that's God's day, Right? And you must not do any work. Sabbath literally in the Hebrew means stop. It means just stop. You're doing all this stuff these other five, six days. Stop and don't do what you're doing. Um, by the way, that humbles us. Because some of us think, oh, I can't afford a day off. If you can't afford a day off, you're doing something wrong. If you don't think, and, and by the way, if you're going, well, my, my people need me. My, my coworkers need me. I can't take a day off. You're way more important than you really are. You, you're way more important up here than you actually are. The world is going to keep on spinning even if we don't do what we normally do. Y'all realize that, right? And so that's why it's important and it's humbling for us to take one day a week to stop doing what we've been doing. Now, it's a good thing for us to work, to, to produce things. As we create, as we work in our jobs, this is something that, that it kind of mirrors God. God is a creative God. And so we, when we go to work, we produce and we create, and that's a good thing. But just like God, <clears throat> it's good to stop for a second. I, I noticed that the richest people, the people that have all the luxuries that we all want, we go, man, if I just had that, 
If I just had that job and I just had this amount of money, I would enjoy it. The people that have it are the ones that can't afford to stop long enough to enjoy it. Have y'all noticed that? That the, the ones that have the big houses and the big cars, they work seven days a week because they got to keep that, that balancing act going. And so God is saying, listen, if you can't get it done in six days, then maybe you need to change something. It's time to sit back and enjoy it. Uh, Exodus 31 goes on to say, be careful to keep my Sabbath day. Why? Because the Sabbath is a sign of a covenant between, this is God talking to his people, between me and you from generation to generation. And look at this. It says, it's given so that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. The, the Sabbath is given to us so that we stop thinking that we are God. Because our natural desire is for us to go, man, if I don't do this, man, I, I'm in charge. I'm, I'm seizing the day. I'm, I'm making this happen. God's going, whoa, 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 whoa. You do realize I'm in control here. And you need me. I'm the one that makes you holy. I'm the one that gives you the things that you have. And so if you're not taking the day off, then you, obviously you, you think that God's not important to think about and to get in front of and to worship and to spend time with because you've got all you need right here. So let's keep working. So are you starting to understand why the Sabbath is so important? And this is a problem in the day and the age that we live because it seems like now busyness is like a status symbol. And I got I to gotta admit to you, for years, that was me. I, there's not been a time in my adult life I worked one job. I've always had two jobs or even three jobs for a couple of years there. And I felt so like, well, you know, I'm out there hustling. And I'm, those, those do-nothings that don't have a job, you know, I'm so much better. I'm three times better than them because I got three jobs. I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't admit that, but there's some of that going on up there where I'm going, I'm so important that, that, that I have all this. And I don't have time to Sabbath. I don't have time to stop. And again, I admit to you, there, because of the nature of my jobs, a lot of times, just because I was sitting at home on my couch didn't mean that I was resting. I was like, ooh, I got an email. Ooh, I did this. Ooh. And I, and I would engage in work and, and pro producing things. And God's like, Whoop. we were having a conversation. And you just, have you ever done that? Have you ever been with somebody who you're having this good conversation with? And then all of a sudden they get a text or an email and then they're like, hold on a second. You're like, I'm right here. Chop liver. What is going on? Right? It's rude. How, but how many times have we done that to God? Where we're, we're, we're actually, you know, in his presence. We're actually thinking about him and the things of God. And we're reading our Bible. And we hear, bling. We're like, oh, oh thank God. <laughs> this is a video of a cat and a monkey. They're friends. You know, you know, because that's more important than spending time with your heavenly father. Right? You notice how it, it's, it's notable that Chick-fil-A doesn't open on Sundays. Used to be, I, I hear from you old, uh, seasoned folks, that that used to be how the whole world was, right? That, well, my day, we did, they didn't open at all on Sundays, right? Because the rest of the world knew the, the, uh, the value of a day off. They knew the value of Sabbath. And so if you're going to boil all these things down, the definition of a Sabbath, and I didn't put this up on the screen or anything, but it's that, that one day a week where you stop what you're doing, but it's not just a day off, right? It's not just take a day off from work. It's you take a day, day off from what you normally do and you rest in the presence of God. I'm so glad that Jake uh, sung about the presence of God, that overwhelmed by his presence right? Because just as equally as much as the Sabbath is about not working, it's also about what you, what you are choosing to do. And we need to choose to do things that bring us closer to God. It's not binge watching two seasons of your favorite Netflix show in one day and you got Cheetos in your beard and you hadn't got off the couch all day. That's not Sabbathing. Sabbathing is, is as long as you're not doing your normal job and you're doing things that will bring you closer to God. Now, Again, as we say this, and, and I encourage you to establish this, I just want you to understand that it's in our hearts to go, to go all Pharisee on everybody about. Y'all know the Pharisees. They liked their rules, right? And they liked, to, they liked to be killjoys when it came to the things of God. And so as I'm telling you to take a day off, understand that we're under grace, that, that we don't have these laws that the Old Testament has. And so if you, you, if you miss a Sabbath, if you can't Sabbath for one week, it's not like you've got to flog yourself and, and, and do all these things because you're in active sin. Sometimes that's life, right? Look at what 
This is what happened. The, the, in, in Mark chapter 2, Jesus gives us a really good principle. And then I want to get to the questions. This is one, a really good principle to keep in mind about the Sabbath. It says, one Sabbath day, Jesus was walking through some grain fields. His disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. You know, because they're hungry. That's what you do on your day off. Get something to eat. You wouldn't think it's a big deal. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Oh, no, it doesn't say that. It says, look, why are they breaking the law of, of harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, haven't you ever read in scripture what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God and he broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests were allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. And then Jesus said to them, and this is the principle I want you to understand, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people, not the people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. This is not a, a rule that you get to look down your nose at, at people and go, you need to be, what are you doing today? The, the Pharisees would go overboard. You can't spit because that makes the dirt turn into mud and the dirt does work. You can, there's only a certain amount of steps that you could take. And they go, any, any farther than that, you're doing work. So there'd be people that would go, oh man, I guess I'm going to chill here for a while because they, they, they couldn't take another step forward. That's not in the spirit of it. And then Jesus drops the mic here with this last sentence. He says, so the son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath. It's like, I'll do what I want. Y'all leave me alone. I'm Jesus, right? I, lo I love how he's, he's so sassy sometimes. But um, the point is, this should be a blessing to us. The reason why this is, this is a thing is because God wants us to sit back and enjoy our life. Now, our, I'm not saying that this means that your life is going to be hunky-dory and you'll never have struggles and you'll never have... But when we build this rhythm of Sabbath into our lives, where at least once a week... By the way, it doesn't have... You all know my, my Sabbath can't be a Sunday. I'm working, right? But if, I, if you find one day during the week where you Sabbath, where you stop what you normally do, and you enjoy God's presence, and you enjoy his blessings, that is going to change your life. That is going to sustain you. That is going to, your tank is not going to be running on empty like we always are. And so again, I've been pretty terrible at this over the past decade. And, but someone who's become a professional Sabbather is my buddy Don Shankle up here. Get, Don, come on up here. Give him a round of applause for hanging out with us. Don Cho. Here's your, did you get a mic? I don't know if, here. There we go. I'm going to give him this one. Um, I'm going to get this other one too, just in case. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, those of you that are new to, with us, um, Pastor Don ha has been with us since what, 2010-ish? Well, while. let's see. The first Sunday that we came to Freedom Family Church, you were at the hospital with Emma. Really? Being, being born. Oh my gosh. So, wow. Yeah. Been with you that long. That's crazy. So almost 10 years. Wow. Well, Don is, he's, you've been a deacon. You've been an elder. Uh, he went ahead of us in 2016 and planted uh, FFC Ramsor. And uh, by the way, I've done this. I've talked to you about this, and I've, I've said this from the pulpit. But I just wanted to take a second, you know, to off off topic here to just thank you for all uh, the blessings that, that you and FFC Ramsor have, have been to Siler City. Um, yeah, if y'all don't know, he went out into the minefield that was church planting, and he just ran headlong into it. And what I did was go. And I stepped around, and, I, and his experience and his advice and uh, your equipment for those first couple months, we shared equipment, um, was, was invaluable. So thank you so much for the blessing that you are uh, to, to Siler City. And this, you can take heart in the fact that you know, part, part of the reason that we're here today is because of, of a lot of your, your prayers and hard work and stuff like that. So thank you, buddy, for doing that. Give him a this is where you clap. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I didn't tell you I was going to do that. But, uh, um, but we want to talk today a little bit about Sabbathing. We've had some really good conversations lately. And so, again, if you have any questions, Vic, go ahead and put up my, my phone number. Y'all don't be texting me in the middle of the night or anything like that. But that is my phone number. Again, we're going to use the phones wisely, I hope, today. Um, but if, if at any point uh, you have questions, shoot that, that number a text. And so, by the way, if I'm reading my text, it's only to read yours. I'm not just, you know, surfing Facebook or anything like that. I promise. Um, but... Um, I wanted to get your perspective on Sabbath because you've, we've, over the years, you've learned a lot. You've been on a journey when it comes to rest um, and when it comes to 
getting in God's presence. So do you mind kind of just taking us through the Cliff Notes version of that journey where you you went from, you had to make some course corrections and, and God kind of showed you what works and what doesn't work and how that's affected, you know, your life? Yeah, I mean, it started off, uh, I, I basically gave my life to the Lord uh, shortly before I actually came to Freedom Family Church, uh, November 6, 2008. Um, and I didn't grow up in church and I didn't know a lot about things of God and what it was that I was supposed to be doing. But uh, as I started going to church and, and I was being taught by some, some fine gentlemen like Ben and Randy, I started reading my Bible. I realized that uh, the Sabbath was something that God encourages us to do. Um, and so I knew that for my life to be everything that it's supposed to be or that I wanted it to be, that I had to do things uh, the way God said I'm supposed to do them, right? Um, and I think sometimes we get messed up with that too because I think there's too many people who think that we have to do what God tells us to do because that's what we're supposed to do, but we don't do what God tells us to do because that's what we want to do. Um, and to be honest, I have learned over the last 10 years that I enjoy doing what God tells me to do because my quality of life just keeps getting better and better and better. So if this was something that God was telling me to do, God created me, God knows how these lives are supposed to be lived to get the most out of them, this was something that I was going to have to figure out how to do. Um, and it started off simply just like, you know, the Sunday thing where you go to church and then kind of come home from church. And my grandparents were big, like, you know, they went to church a lot and they uh, went to church on Sunday, came home. Usually you got a little something to eat. Uh, you took a nap until uh, later on in the afternoon, right? And then you got up and sometimes you went to Sunday service if they had it. But if not, you just went to bed and get prepared for Monday. And it just, that was like their weekly thing. And it was, you could tell that, you know, going to church and, and getting spiritually fed, but then kind of home getting rest and then getting started Mondays. And Mondays they were ready to go and, you know, kind of conquer, conquer the week. Um, so uh, I just, uh, throughout the year, or years of just learning about the Sabbath, realizing, though, that the Sabbath uh, and church are two different things. I think a lot of times we attach them together that we think, you know, Sunday, church, you know, Sabbath, but I have found uh, that the Sabbath is, is separate from that, and it's, it's so much more than that also. Um, and it's not just about, you know, resting, like, like Ben said, physically, but, you know, resting in the Lord, you know, resting in his promises, as, as he has said this morning. Uh, but I've learned, uh, again, going back to quality of life, the balance of life, and getting everything uh, balanced correctly so that way I can get everything out of this life that God has given to me. Um, and I have found it is a, is a physical thing, but it's also a spiritual thing. Um, and you talk about soul rest, and I don't know if Ben has explained to you guys about your soul and what your soul is, but that's who you are, right? That's, that's that thing that's inside of you. That's what makes you you. And there's two things that really drive your soul, right? And there's one that's that physical thing, that's our, our physical presence, but there's also that other thing, which is our spiritual, our spirituality, right? And if we get those things out of balance, we'll find that our soul usually is the one that suffers because of it. Um, and I have found that, you know, if I'm tired physically, then it puts a lot of stress on me spiritually. You know, my spirit is having to kind of make up for that. And then vice versa, if my spirit gets kind of tired, then my, my flesh feels like it's got to take on more. But I also realize that if my flesh is stronger than my spirit, then my flesh will lead me to do things that I normally don't want to be doing. Amen. Uh, but it says that the fruit of the spirit is power and, I mean, uh, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, I guess, that might, uh, all these good things. Um, but in my flesh, I'm usually not those things. So I find if that gets weak, then my one takes over. So I try to get the balance of it correctly. But I have found that if I will rest the way that God tells me to rest, because you guys will talk a little bit about this, but it's really about praying to God and Him leading you in your rest, whether it be physical rest, spiritual rest, whatever it is, that my soul is in the right place and my life is everything that God wants it to be. That I, I really have that abundant life that Jesus gave me. Well, because I remember, like, when you, you first joined up, man, you did, like, everything. You, it was like you, you were on the, you helped with the construction. You were, you were on, like, every church uh, team possible. And, again, some, I love the enthusiasm. And then we've had some people come here that just, like, I want to do this and do this and do this and this. And it was actually your experience where you went, okay, we've maybe gone too far. Um, I, need, I need a little rest uh, that, that has, has helped me to go, hey, why don't you just try two things, and then we'll just see how that goes. Um, what, and what, what triggered you that, from that time where you realized it was, it was too far? Because like, you did like all these good things. There were good things, right? There were things that, that you, you would think, well, God would want me to do this. 
And then all of a sudden you didn't have that, that power. You didn't have that. And you just were kind of, so what tipped you off to that? Well, again, Jesus said my burden is light and my yoke is easy. So if we find ourselves being wore down, it's usually because we're doing something we shouldn't be doing. Or we're doing too much of something. Um, and just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's a God thing. Okay? And you got to it's learn the power of no. Me, when I first got saved, I, I love the Lord. And I, I want to do anything and everything I can for Him. Uh, but I got to make sure that I'm doing what it is that He's telling me to do, not just things I've decided I want to do for Him. Uh, and that's where I found myself. Uh, so many times, uh, people would come and ask me to do something, and I just kept saying yes, 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 and yes. And it's because, like, you know, somebody asked this morning, when are you going to come help in the South City building? They asked me this morning, I said, never. <laughs> I don't. I learned to say no. Yeah. Uh, so you guys know I've built a lot of the the Liberty Campus, and then we did the Ramsar Campus. So my my church building days uh, might have come in, but I just I would say yes to everything because everything that I was being asked to do was good things. They were things I felt like to help build God's kingdom. But, you know, I volunteered at the pregnancy uh, Randolph. Your choice is Randolph Pregnancy Care Center out of Ashboro. Uh, volunteer uh, to coach sports. Uh, and Ramsar, yeah. There you go. Uh, coach sports. I mean, I would just volunteer for all kinds of stuff. Um, I work a full-time job. My job is physical. Um, so I would just find myself just being wore out and tired and all the time. And again, it's important we stay in God's word because we're reminded of things that he tells us. And so when Jesus says, my burden is light and my yoke is easy, I, don't, I didn't feel like it was real light and it was real easy. I felt like I was really wore down. It's just, so I got to stop for a minute and say, something's wrong here. What am I doing wrong? And, uh, and I pray to God, and God's like, you know, you're doing a lot of great stuff, but it's not stuff that I've asked you to do. Uh, and because of that, that's why you're feeling the way you... you, you. And, and this is what I've learned. God is more about quality than he is quantity. He would rather have you do less and do it better than to do more and not do it very well. And so he has cut a lot of things out, and I'm just focused on a couple of things, but those things I'm really focused on, and I give my all to him. And physically and mentally and spiritually... I'm, I'm rested and I'm ready to go and I can give a good effort in that. And, and that's what's really going to make the difference. Uh, but a lot of times we just find ourselves, you know, kind of doing all these little different things, thinking they're good things, but they're not really God things. Um, but also, I was saying this morning, too, about you were saying it's kind of like a badge of honor that we do a bunch, right? Because we always want to brag to people, well, you know, what's going on? Oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I used to think that. I used to think, oh, I'm some big spiritual guy because I'm doing all this great and wonderful thing, right? But really... It's not about that. You know what I mean? Again, it's about doing the things that God tells us to do. But also, the Bible says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. And right now, it seems like in this world, that is kind of a bragging status type thing that we do have all this stuff going on. So if everybody else is doing that, well, then I must be doing that too. And if everybody else is busy, well, then I need to be busy too. But we got to quit looking at our own lives by what everybody else is doing and look at our lives according to what God says they're supposed to be. And that, and that too is where... You know, if you spend more time in God's word and less time social media and some of these other things, then your attention is more on that and it's not comparing yourselves to, to other people. Speaking of, one of the questions we got was uh, that how, do you, how can you tell what, no, what to say yes to, what to say no to? What, how, did, how did you make those decisions uh, on what to say no to so that you can have a Sabbath? Like, what helps you narrow those things down, I guess? Well, Again, when I, I look at my schedule now, it's kind of like the things that uh, I, I want to do and the things that I need to do, but kind of getting some of those things already set in place. I, again, I work a full-time job, obviously, uh, throughout the day, uh, do that, and then, you know, have a family, so I, I, I got to take care of that stuff. Uh, but more than anything outside of that, because those are those daily things you just need to do, right, uh, that if something comes to you or you have an opportunity, that you need to pray about it. Hopefully you guys... Listen, every minute, every second, every hour, every day, you are constantly talking to God, right? It says pray without ceasing. You should never quit talking to him. All your steps should be guided by him. And again, why do we want to do this? Because we know when God leads our lives that that's the best they can possibly be. Do you guys really believe that this morning? Because I'm going to tell you that's where it really started. But something Ben said, you know, he said he kind of looked out and said, you know, but you don't think you need this today. You don't think you need the Sabbath. You don't think you need to rest. I thought that way a long time, too, for myself. And you know what that's called? Pride. Okay? Like, even God rested. If God rested, well, then we need to rest, too. But we got to believe that this is what God tells us to do. This is what we're supposed to do. But getting back to your question is that we pray about it. And so if, say, an opportunity came to me, hey, would you like to do this or would you like to be a part of this? Well, let me pray about it. 
And then I would pray about it, and sometimes I would just get that clear answer of yes or no, but then sometimes I would kind of struggle with it, and this is when I would reach out to Ben, I would reach out to Randy, I would reach out to Jason, I would reach out to friends and family, and say, hey, I've been given this opportunity, what do you think about that? And just through, through prayer, and just God leading me, he would say, yes, I want you to do this, no, I don't want you to do that. I will say this, that there's going to be times when people ask you to do stuff, and you say no, and you know what, they're going to be upset with you. But you have got to learn to say no. You have got to learn to be obedient to God and not be obedient to the, to the ones around you. They're trying to put pressure on you to do things that is not what God is calling you to do. So another one of my prayers as I was praying about yes or no is, God, give me the strength and the courage to say no when you're telling me to say no. It's like Paul said in Galatians, he's like, I'm not, I'm not working for y'all. I'm working for him. Like, I, I'm, he's my master. You're not my master. And so you, you hopefully do what pleases God and, and not necessarily what pleases everybody around you. Um, that's good. That's good advice. So, so definitely, so pray about it and, and ask, you, that's why it's so important for us to have good relationships with godly people so you can go to something you trust and go, what, you know, what do you think? What do you think I should do? And, um, and maybe somebody else's discernment on that. And it's, and I know for me personally, it's also trial and error. Like if I'm trying to figure out uh, what sometimes I don't hear God's voice as clearly as, as other times. And I'm like, I think this is where God's leading me. But then I go, oh. And then when you come out of there and there's no joy and there's no, there's no power and you're in the middle. I've, I've been in the middle of a big project. We did a, a concert. I did years ago. I, did, I hosted this big concert for this Christian radio show that I was doing. And, uh, and in the middle of it, it was just chaos. And it was, and I just, I was like, God, where is your hand in all this? And nothing right. There's all this stuff. And I'm do, I'm trying to do this for you. And I remember that was the first time God's like, but did I tell you? This? Did I tell you to work with these people? Tell, no, you never asked. And and so a lot of times it's it's being in that situation and not feeling God and and doing enough doing that enough times where you can tell the difference between when God is is in it and when he's not. I think that's a big part of it too. Something else that's really important with this, again, we need to be talking to God, but something we had talked about before about hearing the voice of God. And sometimes we find it hard to hear what it is that God is telling us as far as what it is that he wants us to do. And it's because we've not put ourselves in a position to be able to hear God's voice very clearly. Um, and again, this is a, uh, you guys heard the word holistic? Right? You know what that means, right? It's a whole, a whole thing, right? It's your whole life. Your whole life is built. It's a hippie term. But it is a right. hippie term. I'm originally from California, okay? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I smoked a lot of pot back in the yeah. day. I'm not like Clinton. I did inhale. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm saying it's a whole life type thing, and your life is built in a way that you can clearly hear God's voice on a daily basis to know what it is that he's telling you to do. And I'll be honest that where I'm at in my life today, it's like a yellow brick road's in front of me. I don't really struggle a lot with knowing what God wants me to do and doesn't want me to do. It's pretty clear right in front of me. Um, and and I, don't, I don't struggle with it. But again, my life is built in a way where that voice inside of my head is, is really loud and really clear. But there were so many things in my life that he had to get adjusted before that could really take place. That was a process for you. It's right? a process. Yeah. And the Sabbath and the resting time will help you with that. Listen, when we... We know somebody's voice. Why? Because we conversate with them, right? If you've talked to somebody, you know Ben's voice, even if it's all the way over there in, in the nursery, right? Because you've For better heard him, or worse. Woo, yeah, right. Because you've heard him talk so much. Okay, but let's say maybe you <laughs> so much, <laughs> so much in a good way, in a good way, right? But I'm saying though, you know, it says that the, God says my people hear my voice and they know it, right? Why? Because we've spent time with him, we've talked to him, we know what his voice sounds like. But if you don't spend time with God, if you don't spend time hearing his voice, you're not going to know what his voice sounds like. And sometimes it's going to be difficult to know that direction that he's given to you. All right. So, again, you know, and, and what I found more than anything else is getting myself out of the way. A lot of times in our prayer life or even our conversations, what are we doing most? We're talking. But, you know, when you have a really great prayer life is when you're listening. I'll tell you this, you guys. I do a lot more listening nowadays than I do talking. There's times where I'll sit alone with God and I won't say a word. And I simply just hear his voice. And that helps me again. So again, but if you don't have that thing going on and then you get into a situation, you're being asked to do something, you know what I mean? And you're like, I don't know, right? It's kind of because you're lost in yourself because you're not hearing that voice from God to give you that direction. 
That, that's and that's part of what I almost brought you in last week because we did silence and solitude as a as a principle of soul rest and and how there's just times where you just got to hush and you got to hear from God. Well, how it, and, and that's something we've talked about too that you've incorporated more in your life where you've had opportunities to just be in the house by yourself, just you and you and Daddy, as you said, just you and and, and God. Um, how have you incorporated that uh, into your life as far as in your schedule? Like, is there like certain times that you say, I got to get, I got to pray, and, and it just works out that it's at this time every day, or is that, does that change a lot? Or how have you incorporated that habit of, of that getting in the presence of God uh, alone? Well, let me say this. Uh, I'm very methodical, very systematic, as I say. Um, you got to have structure in your life. God is a big fan of structure. Uh, I was thinking about even, you know, Old Testament, like the building of the temple or even, you know, the tabernacle. And, you know, you need to put the, the bars through this hoop and it's all this stuff, right? But um, in my life, I'm, I set things up to where I, I'm planned to do things. I don't just kind of live day by day, just kind of wake up and say, hey, let's just kind of see what the wind blows and brings this way. Um, so throughout the week, I, I look at what I need to do, what I feel like God is wanting me to do, and I put in place uh, times of rest, whether they be physical rest, uh, because again, my physical job and, and just your bodies get wore out. And you guys, one of the things that's hurting a lot of us is, is physically, uh, we are not well, uh, we're not eating right. Uh, we're not, uh, you know, exercising correctly, but we're also not resting correctly. So I make sure that there's times of good rest and it could be something as simple as you're sleeping at night. A lot of people do not get proper rest at night. And I know you're thinking, oh, this is physical. I thought this was a spiritual thing. It all works together, you guys. A couple years ago, I was feeling really bad. I went to God. I said, God, I need some help. Uh, he said, well, I want you to exercise. I want you to tell you your diet, and your sleeping is not good. And it's kind of funny because when I, I said I'm, like, tired every day, you know, God, when you ask him a question, he asks you a question back because he wants you to figure the answer out yourself, right? He, Jesus he to do that to you, doesn't he? said that all the time. And every time they'd ask him a question, he's like, well, let me ask you a question. <laughs> And, you know, God's like, well, what time do you go to bed? Well, about 12 or 1 o'clock. You know, what time do you get up? About 5 o'clock. Well, that seems to be about 4 or 5 hours of sleep. Um, how about you try this? How about you, like, the 8 or 9 hours of sleep that they tell you you're supposed to get, and let's see what happens. And it was like, wow, it was a miracle. Part of the Red Sea. I went to bed the way I was supposed to. I woke up the next day, and I'm all full of energy. Hey, let's, right? Um, so through, through the, my week, and, and I plan my life to where I make sure I get that. But then also, depending on what the week have, is that if I have a lot of stuff going on, that there's another day that he might put in there for just a physical rest. Yesterday, I didn't have a lot going on, and God said, I want you to just kind of lay around and not do too much and just physically rest. But even in that was also some spiritual rest. But also the same time that I scheduled that spiritual time, too, just to rest in him, to spend time with him. Um, but again, if you don't have your life set up in a way to where you put these things in place before you get there, then you're going to struggle with making sure that they happen. So, I, I mean, I do this with all my life. Like, you know, like eating healthy. You know, eating healthy takes what? You got to prepare for it. You got to think about the foods you're going to make. You make. You know what I'm saying? And so all that kind of stuff that you kind of. In kinda, theory. Huh? In theory, I know what you're Right. Mean, well, most of the problem. time we don't. We stop at the McDonald's, this and that. But I, God has changed my diet. I eat very healthy now. But I have to think about my meals. I think about them when I get to the grocery store. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to make it with this. And I'm going to portion it up for this. I'm going to eat this on this day and this. And it allows me to be successful in my life. It's the same thing with my rest, whether it be physical, whether it be spiritual. And so, so speaking of, that's a good, and that leads into one of the quest, texted questions here. Uh, what, because it sounds like probably on your Sabbath day, you might go grocery shopping. You might take time to plan out your week. Uh, and it, it, that makes space for that. What are some things, one of the questions was, what are some things that you find are worthy of you doing on the Sabbath? If we're not supposed to just lay there and veg out every, you know, for, for 24 hours straight, what are some things that you think are, are worth doing uh, on, on the Sabbath? Well, and then again, let me say this too, because we think about Sabbath, Saturday or Sunday, but let's say you work on the weekends, maybe your Sabbath would be a Wednesday. It's just a day set apart, right? It, it's a day, he says, keep the Sabbath holy, which holy just means set apart, right? And basically just kind of a concentrated So you're not reading God. your Bible like all day, like <laughs> yourself a food and you just sit there. That's not what it means to be holy. No, I mean, it, it is a, a time of rest because it says, you know, even if you don't leave, need to leave your house, don't. And basically it says, you know, kind of make some meals before the day before. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's kind of a disconnecting from, from all your normal stuff. It says kind of get away from the, 
the normal things that you do. So it's like today would be, uh, Sunday is like my Sabbath, I go to church, I'm just kind of resting in him, getting fed, and then yes, after I leave here, I will be going to Food Lion and getting my food for the week. Uh, I buy a lot of uh, vegetables and fruit stuff, stuff that you can't keep for a long time, so I have to go to the grocery store every couple of days, but even in the grocery store, uh, I'm spending time with him, because I'm just walking around with my cart, I'm looking at different things, I'm talking to him, should I get that, should I get that, stay away from the Twinkie aisles. So that's what <laughs> he's doing when you see him walking around the food line, don't, don't think he's just crazy, he's just talking to the, you know, kumquats. Right, um, and then, you know, there is times where I just sit there um, in just complete silence while I'm conversating with him, and sometimes it's, uh, it's back into the word, because really that's just conversation with him also. Uh, but I, also, I think family too. Like you, you've spent you, you and Elijah have gone hiking and stuff like that. And that's yeah. another thing I will say. This it's uh, we like to go out into the woods a lot and just walk around in the woods. Um, and it's just you know being out there in the presence of God and it's quiet and it's the birds and stuff. And sometimes you just sit and you just and and you surprised at just doing that. How much better that makes you feel. Uh, some funny, I guess it's just the oxygen that's in the woods because the trees or something like that, but you come out of there and even the whites of your eyes will be whiter. It's just like this cleansing thing that happens with you, but it's your soul. It's, your soul feels good and then it seems like everything else about your life, you know, seems to be better. So, but it's just about giving your soul that rest. It's, I was thinking about it this morning, something that, uh, just some of you guys know, uh, me and my wife have, have separated. Uh, my wife, she liked to f sleep with the fan on. So for years, I've been sleeping with the fan on, okay? I'm not a big fan of it, but that's what she liked, and she couldn't sleep unless the fan was on. Uh, but here lately, uh, I have been sleeping without the fan on, and it has actually been better um, because I think in our lives and in our minds, we have to have some kind of noise, right? There has to be some kind of noise for us to be able to go to sleep. But you realize that actually as that noise is making noise, you're still hearing that even though if you're sleeping. So even in that sleep, you're not really getting good, restful sleep. And I use a lot of physical, you know, references to this, but I turn the fan on, and it's like literally I'm sleeping harder and deeper through the night, and I'm actually feeling better in the morning. And it's just because, like, this disconnect of, of you know, you're like this all the time, and then you can just kind of relax. And then it just helps you with so many different things in your life. You'd be surprised at how it affects your, your attitude, your, your behavior, your thoughts which leads to your actions, which just leads really to a better life. And so it's really whatever is, uh, your Sabbath may be different than somebody else's Sabbath. You know, if, you're, if you really enjoy the outdoors, go into the outdoors. If you're, you're not much of an outdoorsman, then, you know, clean the attic. I mean, if that's, some, some find rest in cleaning the attic, right? That's just, that's just who you are. Um, well, I, I think that that's... That, so, yes, yes and no. Because again, again, let's take the example of Jesus. It says that Jesus got away from everybody. And yeah. where did Jesus go? He went into the woods. He went into the wilderness. It actually says that in the Bible. Is the woods is too. Right? Just say no, yeah. But I'm saying, no, I think, I think there, there is times that, yes, you, you're doing something different. And then even like you're in the attic, maybe you're talking to God, you have a conversation. So that can be that time. But I think, I think it has to be, again, the holistic approach, it has to be every part of it. It has to be not just... You know, doing something different than what you're doing, but also not doing anything at all. Well, and I think, too, there's different seasons. Like, if you're a retiree, uh, you and your wife hanging out, <laughs> or you and your husband hanging out, that's a different type of rest than, you know, a single parent or a parent with a newborn child. Like, there's something, like, you don't get to just not change their diapers on, uh, on your Sabbath day. Sorry, honey, it's my Sabbath rest. That's, that's, can't do it. Like, there's, you still got to, you know, feed your kids. You still have to do laundry so you can have some drawers to wear tomorrow. You know, there's, there's a certain things that you still have to do, but it depends on the season. So if you're, if you're a single 20-something, you, you may go take a road trip, but that might not be very restful for a family of three or four or five. So it just depends on, on where you're at in your life. But as long, whatever, I think well, this is whatever is bringing you closer to God, do it. Um, another, th another question that we got, and it's interesting, and then we'll, we'll move on to one more thing before we get out of here, is um, uh, somebody asked, do you find that there's more spiritual attacks on your Sabbath? Because like, yeah, hopefully you understand we are at war in a spiritual sense. There's, there's warfare going on. And so uh, we know, we, I can imagine, and I've seen that, you know, the Sabbath prepares you to better do battle, but do you get a lot of 
uh, spiritual attacks on your Sabbath still? Well, the thing about Jesus being out in the wilderness, right? He was out there 40 days, 40 nights, and then that's when the devil attacked him because he was at his what? He was at his weakest, right? Listen, you guys, the Bible says live a quiet, peaceful, and I like to put simple life, right? We, we are doing way too much, and we're always wore down, and we're always tired. That's when the devil is going to want to attack you, okay? I, again, th this is a structure thing of your life. We're doing too much. We need to do less. And if we would structure our life to have the times of rest and all those things, right? Uh, and again, you're resting in him and you're resting in his promises and you're, and you're looking at this life for what this life really is, which is an education. It says for all men to come to the knowledge of truth and be saved, right? I mean, this place is not our home. We're just pilgrims. We're just passing through. And the things of this, you know, I don't worry about what I'm going to wear. I don't worry about my food. I don't worry about all those things. I'm just resting in him, resting in him. So if I'm, if I'm constantly there and I'm constantly in a place uh, that the enemy doesn't feel like he can attack me. It doesn't whether it's my Sabbath or it's just the middle of the week that he's not going to really attack me. Um, but yes, you need to, uh, you got to kind of, I want to say fight for it, but you got to be purposeful in making these times for your rest. Because let's be honest, who's ever tried to read the Bible and then the phone starts ringing, right? Or the kids start crying or, or your spouse comes to you with some kind of problem, right? So, and it's like, I need to get away and, re and read my Bible. But again, it's because we just try to throw it in the, in the middle of this moment instead of actually setting up these times and places for me to do these things that God has called me to do. So my life can be everything uh, that he wants it to be, that I want it to be. And again, for my blessings and for his glory, because when our lives look good, that's when people are going to want what we have, right? If we're not always running crazy, our souls are at rest, we've got this peace about us, we've got this joy, you know, in our hearts, and we, you understand what I'm saying? People see that and say, man, what is it that you do? Well, let me tell you about my Jesus, all right? So, again, though, but it's a, how you structure your life so that way these things can be there, and you will find that if you do that, that usually you're, you're not, you're not going to have as many issues as if you just try to do it. Um, and again, because that's you trying to do it instead of God saying, this is the time that I want you to do it, right? We meet with God when God tells us that we're supposed to meet with him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I wanted to make sure we understood too, and because you, you and I have joked for years, there was a time where you have admitted, man, sometimes I just want to like run away to my cave in Montana, you know, I want to take my family and, and hold myself up and just get, get away from the chaos. And, and then you, I think you, over the years you realize that's not necessarily what God wants for us. It's not like we need to be isolated. We, we want to be alone with God, but we don't want to be isolated. And we want to still be able to, you know, we love God by loving people too. So how do you, because you know you've got that in you, that desire to just run away. And I don't want anybody to think, I don't want to feed that in y'all. Like, well, that Ben said I need to take. So then you start isolating yourself. How do you stop it from becoming a uh, a selfish thing where you just because I see a lot of things on Facebook nowadays where they're like, you know, I can understand why people don't want to be around other people. Oh, people stink. Oh, they, and, and because we do, right? It's it's I get it. But how do you stop yourselves from turning the Sabbath into something selfish? Well, you you got to pray and ask God to fill you with love, and we got to have a love for people, and we got to have a love for people that a lot of times we don't even like. Um, but the truth is, is to be in the presence of God. Uh, I, I think about I think about Moses going up on the mountain, right? He's he's there for forty days, forty nights in the presence of God. And when you have, if you've ever gotten to the presence of God like that, you don't want to you don't want to come out of it. Um, we've talked about this before, like when you fast, when you fast and pray, there's just this closest with God, and it's like, man, I love that. I want more of that. So, but you gotta you gotta pray and ask God to fill you with love for other people because you want to help other people to come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So as much as I would like to spend all my time with God, I know I got to spend my time with other people so that way I can share the love of Christ. Um, and other people did that for me, so I should want to do that for other people. Um, so how easy it would be for me to just want to run away and not be around people, because let's be honest, people, you know, are not always the greatest, right? Um, but again, I was going to use another word, but I don't know if you guys speak that way in Southern City. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but a rough crowd in Ram Story. It was <laughs> it's okay. We're a little rough for group over there. Um, but I'm saying though, so um, but, the, but again though, if we uh, are not in a right place in ourselves, um, then we're not going to want to be around other people. 
Right? So when we're tired, what do we, we get what? We get irritated. You ever come home from a hard day's work and then the kids and the wife and you end up yelling at the kids, yelling at the wife, kicking the dog and all that good stuff and it's because you're not arrested correctly, right? Let's be honest, this is everyday life, right? But if you guys would get your lives in the right way that you'll find that you're, you're more willing to deal with people. You ask God to fill with your love, but your soul is rested, you're physically rested, you're spiritually rested, you're in a good place to share that love. And it should be in every one of us that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior a, a major crazy desire to want to share the love that we have with others, right? We should want other people to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know about you guys, but it's everything to me. It's, it's amazing. And I want it even for my enemies. So again, yes, it would be much, like Paul said, I would rather be with him. But if I need to be here so that way some others can be saved, then so be it. All right, so to go through all that problem. But again, if you're tired and you're messed up and all this other stuff, you want to deal with people, you don't want to do it with yourselves most of the time. You're definitely not going to want to deal with somebody else. So again, it's, that's, that's why those things are important. And again, God, God, as you spend time with you, he will put that inside of you, and you will want to go and spend time. I think that's how you know, too, that you Sabbath right, is because you come out and you're like, all right, let's go. Let's love people. Let's, let's. You know, you're, you're more motivated. And also, you, Sabbath doesn't have to be alone. Again, there's just not an option for me to Sabbath alone because I get young it's coming out of my ears. And so it's like you've got to, you, you, you Sabbath as a family. If you don't have kids, there's people that you can share a meal with. And, and you know, you, you might not need to give all the people, but there might be certain people that would be a blessing to your Sabbath. And, and so as long as you are... If you're coming out with more of the fruit of the Spirit, with more of the desire to love people, I think you know you're doing it right. So um, so what we're going to do, we're going to wrap up, um, and, and Don's going to hang out. I'm going to hang out. But, th again, the reason I want to make this super cool is because I want you to take this and apply it. Uh, we, you know, th the Sabbath is one of those things. It's a it, theory. It, it makes all the difference to actually go out and, and put this into practice. And so um, if, you, uh, if you have any questions, uh, hang around. And the, here's the one thing I want to understand. Go pull that, that Hebrews verse back up there that has you underlined. This is what I need you to understand before we go. It says, only we who believe can enter in his rest. Applying the principles of God without the salvation of God is not going to work in this instance. If, it's not a Sabbath if you're not saved. It's a day off. It's just good, but it's not what it could be because we don't get the presence of God. We don't get his, uh, that, that level of rest and, uh, and, and encouragement unless we are in him. And so the, even, even in the Sabbath, if you're noticing that you just, you just are taking a day off, maybe you need to under, understand that Maybe I need to go and, and ask God for forgiveness for my sins. Maybe I'm not, maybe I've gone to church and I've never actually taken a hold and seized the salvation that he offers us. Um, because when we're in Christ, when we are saved, when we've been forgiven of our sins, when we've been made new, that's when rest is available to us. The Sabbath is supposed to be a taste of heaven. Because the eventual, the ultimate Sabbath is eternity. Right when we will all we will be able to rest in His presence in a way that we'll never get here. That that even in our jobs and our duties, that there won't be the same grind that we're dealing with. There's a curse here on us on Earth where you work five or six days a week, you're you're tired and you're you're frustrated. That's not going to be so in heaven. And so even in the Sabbath, this is an opportunity for believers to go. I just want to get a little taste, a little sample of what it's going to be like forever and ever and ever in the presence of God and so don't miss that don't I tremble with fear for those of us that are missing out on the rest not just because they're have, being cranky pants right now but because in eternity they're not going to get to see God they're going to be experiencing hell so that's that's something that we should we should make sure that we get right and so if you have any questions about that as well we'd love to talk to you